Greetings, I am Dr. Chun Jin of Seoul Sanbon Samson Dental Clinic. Previously, I've talked about implant prosthesis. In this lecture, I'm going to talk about implant abutments. The contents are as shown. I'm going to talk about early implant design, which still lays the foundation. Abutment definition, connection structure, and functions will be discussed. I'm going to talk about the five different specification of TS implant abutment, which is internal clinical connection. This is the early design of Bronemark, Strauman, and Astratech. Bronemark implant was introduced in 1965. 21 years later, Strauman implant was introduced in 1986, and thereafter in 1989, Astrak implant was launched. Brony Mark implant is external connection and submerged type. It is used to fixate lower denture. It has originality and it has been used for long term and long term stability is more established. Connection area, it has a 2.7 millimeter of hex form. The top height is 0.7 millimeter. It follows the industrial standard. So if you use this design, it is often interchangeable between different brands. Strauman implant was launched there since. Unlike Brownie Mark, it is internal submerged type. At the time, osteointegration was the biggest challenge, and at one stage surgery where it is not submerged was under a lot of attack. It has an 8 degree internal Morse taper, and the abutment has a mechanically stable connection structure. The prosthetic procedure is simple and there is less a screw loosening, but it does not have many prosthetic options. Once the surgery is done, and in order to increase osteointegration success rate, Strauman implant was the first one to do surface treatment. This is astrotype implant. This is most frequently used in internal clinical type. And this is internal submerged type. There's less screw loosening, and upon secondary surgery, there is internal self-guide effect when connecting the prosthesis, so there's more convenience, and there's less bone loss compared with external type. Let's talk about implant abutments. Abutment is the middle part which connects implant and prosthesis. Abutment is connected with abutment screw and on top crown is cemented. As for the interface between implant and abutment for external connection, it is outside of implant and for internal connection, it is within the implant. Abutment can be if divided into one piece and two piece type. In the case of one piece, there is screw within the abutment and two piece has separate screw. There are different types of one piece abutment forms. You can use one piece abutment that fits the implant system. It is connected as it rotates just like healing abutment, so it does not have a separate hex. You can connect it with a separate screw. The abutment does not rotate and is placed vertically for connection. Once the abutment is connected, on top of it, crown is cemented. The occlusal force that is applied on crown is delivered to abutment and implant and ultimately to the alveolar bone. The occlusal force needs to be distributed evenly to allow implant prosthesis to function stably. This is an image where occlusal force is distributed depending on different systems when occlusal force is applied in US and SS system. There is a vertical stop that prevents a deviation of abutment. On the other hand, TS does not have stop against the vertical force. Screw type prosthesis has a one piece abutment and crown. One piece abutment is connected using a screw and after connection, one seal is placed and resin filling is done. In the case of cemented type prosthesis, on top of abutment, one seal is placed to fill it up, and on top, of the prosthesis is cemented. As for ER type prosthesis, on top of the prosthesis, there's already screw access hole. The 
cementation process is similar to cement type. You connect the abutment first, and then you cement the crown. Just like screw type, then you use one seal and resin for sealing on the screw hole. I'm going to talk about specifications of TS abutment. There are different specifications to consider for TS abutment. The platform connection diameter, height, gingival height. Platform can be divided into two. In TS, under 3.5 is considered mini platform and over 4.0 is regular platform. If you look at the cross section, the platform size differ, so you can see that the abutments are not interchangeable. Mini platform is 2.8 millimeter and regular platform is 3.35. In mini platform, you need to use mini abutment and you need to use regular abutment for a regular platform. If you use regular abutment on mini platform, it will not connect. It does not work that way. And if you connect the mini abutment on regular platform, then there will be a gap in between. I'm going to briefly address the platform switching. This concept is derived from external implant. If you connect the regular abutment on wide platform, you can see that there is less bone loss around the implant. In external implant, if you connect it, the right size abutment, then you can see a certain level of surrounding bone loss. However, if you connect a abutment that is smaller, then compared with when the right size abutment is connected, the surrounding bone loss is reduced, and this is what platform switching is about. If you connect a smaller abutment on external implant, the mobility of abutment is reduced and implant abutment interface becomes away from bone. Therefore, there can be gingival fill and hence less alveolar bone loss. In the case of TSC implant, which is internal submerged type, it has a platform switching effect structurally, therefore it is more favorable in preventing bone loss. Second is connection. This is about uh, implant and abutment connection structure, and it can be divided into hex and non-hex. If you look at cross-section, as for hex, below the abutment, there is a hexagonal structure. And for non-hex, it looks circular. As for hex, it is very convenient to reposition the abutment. And for non-hex, because connection area is wider, it is structurally more stable. Conversely, hex abutment, you need to check whether it goes in fully, and you need to check whether there's any underseating. You should check with x-ray image to see if there's any gap. With non-hex, there's nothing interfering, so there's less possibility of underseating. You need to habitually check whether there's uh, any underseating or whether the hex has gone through. In the case of hex abutment, you can see that there is an x-ray gap here and that this has been repositioned and now it's correctly connected. If you look at cross-section of hex and non-hex, so you can see that contact surface is longer for non-hex. If you look at 4.0 diameter implant, the contact length is 1.2 millimeter for hex, and for non-hex, it is 2.2 millimeters, so it has much more significant contact length. Accordingly, it has a wider contact surface. Compared with hex, non-hex has about 50% more contact surface, so it has more resistance against occlusal force. When you do splinting on two implants, the hex abutment allows 11 degrees of implant divergence. Whereas it is 22 degrees for non-hex abutments, therefore, non-hex abutments are easier to repair. However, it is difficult to reposition non-hex, so when you connect it, you need to have transfer jig. Third is about diameter. You need to choose the appropriate abutment with the right diameter. 
The diameter of the implant should be similar or smaller than the thickness of the cervical area of the tooth to be restored. Depending on tooth contour, if you choose the abutment diameter, in the case of lower anterior, you either use MS implant or 4.0 diameter implant. In the case of upper anterior, the recommendation is to use 4.5 diameter. In premolar area, you can use 4.5 or 5.0. And in the posterior area, you can use up to 6 or 7 millimeter. Apartment diameter affects the emergence profile. You need to think of the emergence profile as you choose the diameter. Based on implant axis, you need to avoid abutment which spreads like a dish with over 40 degrees. The height refers to the height of cementation. In stock abutment, the height is 4 mm, 5.5, and 7 mm. From implant top to the antagonist, in between, there is gingival height and height, as well as crown thickness. You can think of these three layers. The height for removing crown in the abutment is 3 mm. Depending on crown material, you need 1.5 to 3 mm of prosthesis thickness. If the abutment height is less than 3 mm, you need to use custom abutment and you need to form box or groove to avoid abutment failure. Before prosthesis setting, you need to do sandblasting on the surface to increase roughness. Gingival height is where it goes through the gingiva, and as for stock abutment, it ranges from 1 mm to 5 mm. If you use gingival height of 1 mm or 2 mm, this means that you have not placed the implant sufficiently deeply, and I'm going to talk about this again when I talk about biologic width. The margin of prosthesis can be in line with the gingival line in the case of aesthetic zone like the anterior area. In general, the margin becomes a subgingival, and in the posterior area where aesthetics is not as important, you can make supragingival margin as well. As shown in various uh, literature, the gingiva around healthy implant tends to be deeper than a natural tooth. According to Papayola's research in 2014, the thickness of healthy natural tooth is about 3.2, but around healthy implant, the gingival thickness is 4.4 millimeters on average. There's about 1.2 millimeters of difference. If you place implant bone level in the area with a thick soft tissue, then there will be no alveolar bone loss. However, if there's a thin soft tissue, then around the implant, there will be bone loss. This is to maintain a certain level of soft tissue thickness. If the gingiva is thin, if you place the implant shallow following bone level, then our body tends to cause a bone resorption in order to secure soft tissue thickness. This is basically the biologic width concept. There needs to be at least a 3 mm of soft tissue barrier around the implant. If this is lacking, then bone loss will occur as to secure the space. We need to respect the biologic width and consider the shielding distance in order to prevent bone loss around the implant. Hence, if you come across a thin gingiva, you need to consider shielding distance and place the implant 3 mm deeper considering the gingiva. If the gingiva is thin, as of the gingiva, you need to place the implant about 4 mm below. That is where the implant top should be. If the implant placement has been done properly, then you will not use a gingival height of 3 mm or below. I've talked about implant abutments thus far. Once implant and abutment is connected, it has has a very significant role in the long-term implant stability and alveolar bone and gingival health. More specifics will be addressed master course offline. Next time, I'm going to talk about repair of implant prosthesis. Thank you.